In Lesson 7, we're continuing to add data to our customer table. Okay, I'm ready to type in my second customer. Let's go with Joe, tab, Smith, tab. Notice the customer ID has already been set for us by access to record 2. He's at uh, XYZ Corp, 101 Main Street, Buffalo, New York. 14220. Tab past the country. I don't have his email address. That's okay. I'll press tab. Now, speaking of missing an email address, I've always been of the mindset that I would rather have no data than bad data. I very seldom force users to have to type in information. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes you want to make sure you have some bit of information. But if you don't have the data as a user, if the database forces you to type something in, you're likely to just put junk in there to get by it, right, to get rid of the error message. Well, I don't want that. It's easier for me to go back later and say, okay, we're missing data from these people than it is to try and look at each record and figure out which ones are just garbage. For example, email addresses. Let's say you force the user to type in email addresses, and they came in here and they put in, okay, xxx at gmail.com. Well, that's not really his email address, so now you've got bad data in there. It's much better if there's nothing there, because then you can print out a list and hand it to the secretary and say, okay, contact these people and get their email addresses. So just keep that in mind. In a future lesson, that beginner level three that I keep talking about, I'm going to teach you how to make certain fields required, so the user has to put a value in, although I almost never use it. Okay, moving on. I don't have his website either, so I'll just press tab. I do have his phone number, 716-555-3434, tab. Number of employees, let's say 500. Discount rate, let's say this customer gets a 10% discount rate. I'll type it in as 0.1, remember that's 10%, tab. Customer sense, how about 3190, tab. And let me fix my customer sense field, by the way. I haven't been a customer since 2029, since it's only 2013, right? That's a situation where you want to use data validation, which I'll also teach you about in a future lesson, where you can say, don't let this be a date beyond today's date. So I'll, ta I'll change this back to 1185, let's say. Okay, down arrow will move me back down here, and then right arrow will move me over there, see? Nice and easy once you learn all the keyboard shortcut tricks. Let's go with a credit limit of $500, tab. Is active, sure, spacebar, tab. Notes, how about bill, him, net 30, tab. And I'm down to the next record. Notice the pencil is gone from the left-hand side over there, so the record has been saved to the database. Once you've got the table all set up and built, it's very easy to put your data in. I like to put some records in as the developer when I'm done building a table. I like to put some sample records in, even if it's just bogus data, because it's easier when you're building your queries and your forms and your reports if you can see the way they're going to look with some data in them. Rather than just having blank forms where you can't see any of the data, it's easier to lay stuff out if you can see, okay, the company name is this wide, the address is this wide, the city field can be smaller, and things like that. So I like to put some sample records in at the table level. Now, for the purposes of class, I would like to have about 10 or so different customer records in here. Because we're going to work on queries in a few minutes, and the whole point of queries is to break down your data and to see it in different ways. And that works best if we've got several records to work with. Now, if you want to type a bunch of different records in, that's fine. Put some people in from some different states and some different last names, whatever sample data you want. If you don't like typing, and who does, I put some sample data up on my website, 599cd.com slash xacdata1. Just type that into your web browser, and you'll see the sample data records that I'm going to be using. Here's the page on my site. The data is right in this little window. All you have to do, you can see right down here the instructions. Step one, click the button. That'll select the text. Or if you want, you can click in here and then hit Control A. That'll select all the text, too. Press Control-C, that'll copy that text to your clipboard, Control-C, all right? 
Switch over to Access and press Control-V to paste the records into your customer table. Now watch this. Here's how we're going to do it. Here I am back in Access. I've already copied the data from the web page into my clipboard. Now I'm going to click right there in the left-hand side there. That's going to select row 3, that blank new record. Now I'm going to hit Paste by hitting Control-V on my keyboard. That's Control-Victor. Control-V. That pastes those records in. It says you're about to paste 11 records. Are you sure you want to paste these records? I'll say yes. And there they are, straight off the website. This data back here, by the way, this is just plain text. It's tab delimited text. So it's text with tab characters between them. Access is pretty forgiving if you want to copy data from one source and paste it somewhere else. Paste it into a table, for example. Again, make sure if you're going to paste an entire record, you click right there in that little gray box to the left of the row. That's called the record selector. If you click there, it selects that entire record. If you're just sitting right here inside of the first name field and you try to paste data, it's going to give you an error. It's going to say the text is too long to be edited because you're trying to paste all this information into that one little field. So you can't do that. So I'm going to hit the X there or OK. And I'm going to press Escape on the keyboard. Notice how I'm editing a record right now, because I tried to paste some data there. So the record is dirty. I'm going to hit Escape, and that tells Access that I don't want to make that edit. I don't want to make that change. Forget what I just tried typing in. Now notice I've got two sets of records here, and I've already typed in Richard and Joe, and Richard and Joe were on the website as well. So I'm going to delete one set of these. I'm going to delete these guys. Now you can delete a record, any single record, by simply clicking on the record selector for that row. So if I click on Richard right here, for example, and press delete on the keyboard, it says you're about to delete one record. If you say yes, you won't be able to undo this delete operation. So if I say yes right now, it's gone. There's no undo for it. It's, it's goodbye forever. I'm going to say no, though, and put it back. Watch this. See, it puts it right back. That was the oops, I wasn't sure. I don't want to delete it. Put it back, please. And the reason why is I'm going to show you how to delete two records at once. Click and drag, and you can select as many records as you want over here, but I want just these two. I'm going to delete two records. So now with both of those selected, I'm going to press delete. It says you're about to delete two records. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Goodbye. Now they're gone. No way to get them back. Now this is why it's important to back up your data regularly. If you take more of my classes, you'll see this screen from time to time. Some things that you do in Access cannot be undone. Deleting records is one of them. So make sure you make a backup of your data from time to time. It's simply a matter of running a nightly backup, which you should be backing up all your files. That database file that we saved earlier in your documents folder, or wherever you saved it, just make a copy of that somewhere else so that in case you accidentally delete some records, you can go and get them out of your backup database. We will talk a lot more about proper data backup in future classes. Now notice I've got a gap in my customer IDs. I deleted three and four, so now it goes one, two, five, six, seven. If I add a new record down here now, notice the next one is 15, because I started entering 14 when I pasted that data, and then I hit escape and it went away. Once a number is assigned, then it's used. It's gone forever. Remember, you don't have to worry about those auto numbers. You don't have to have the same auto numbers as I do. We're only going to use those numbers for forming relationships later on when we get to our expert classes, when we have to relate customers to other information in other tables, like the order table or the contact history table. That's when that auto number comes into play. So I'm going to hit escape again, and I'm not worried at all what this auto number is. These could be in the hundreds or thousands. doesn't matter. You will never again have a customer number 8 in this database. And that's intentional. You want that because you don't want to accidentally delete that and then reassign 8, and now whatever other records were in other tables like orders and such would get assigned to Ronald Sims. So just keep in mind, people ask me all the time, well, how do I get these numbers back? You don't. They're gone. They're used. They're spent. There is one minor exception. I'll talk about that in later classes. There is a way to get back some of the auto numbers, but we don't have to worry about that right now. 
Now also, back here on the website, I did also include a link to a copy of the full database that I built in today's class. I mentioned this in the intro video earlier on. I would prefer you build this database with me in class as we're learning access, but if you want to download the whole database file, there it is. Just right click on it and go to save link as or save target as depending on your browser. Now when you download one of my database files, they're all in zip format. Zip is just a way of taking a file or a bunch of files and scrunching them down into one smaller file so they're easy to transfer via email or over the web. Now, if you double click on this zip file, it opens up in a standard Windows folder here. And here you can see the database. Now, if you double click on this, it does open up an access, but it says the database has been opened read only. You can only change data in linked tables to make design changes, save a copy of the database. Because files that are inside a zip file cannot be edited with an access directly. So let me show you what you have to do. Now I just saved this file on my desktop, but it works fine if you're in your documents folder or your downloads folder or wherever you happen to save this to. Double click to open it again. Here's the file inside of the zip file. Just click and drag it and drop it on your desktop. It says copy to desktop right there. And now you can see there's the access file outside of the zip file. All right, we can actually get rid of that zip file now. Delete, goodbye. Okay, now I have just the database file. Now I can double click to open up the access database. Now when this database opens up, you get a security warning. It says some active content has been disabled. Click for more details. You can click on this link to read all the details if you want to. But in a nutshell, access will disable any potentially harmful stuff that could be in this database if it detects that it's from a source other than you. If you didn't build this database, if you got it off the web, like you just did, or if you get it in an email from someone, Access is very, very powerful. And you can utilize the entire Visual Basic programming language inside of an Access database. There's all kinds of stuff. There's, there's very few things you can't do with Access. So an Access database could potentially do harm to your computer by overwriting files or deleting stuff or it could in fact spread a virus. That's what the security warning is for. So Access is just making sure that if it realizes you got this database from someone else, it's warning you about the security. Now, you can come in here and open up the tables and look at the forms and the reports without having to worry about a virus or anything harmful happening to your computer. However, programming in this database will not work until you click on Enable Content. Only click on Enable Content if you're sure this database has come from a safe source. For example, my website. I guarantee any database you find on my website is safe. If you download it from somewhere else, I can't make that claim. But in this case, I'll click on Enable Content, and now the database is fully unlocked. So that's what that security warning means if you download a database from someone else. So here I am back in my database, and um, I'm going to just resize a few things in here. Double click, double click there, double click there, maybe resize this a little bit. State can be smaller, like that. I can see what that means. I don't need to have the whole word state visible. All right, resize postal code and so on. Let's say you decide you want country out in front of the address. Click here to select the entire column, then let it go, hand off the mouse, then click and drag to put it wherever you want. That's called a layout change. You can rearrange these columns however you want, but again, we're not going to spend most of our time in table data sheet view. We're going to be working with forms. I'm going to show you forms in a few minutes. So to put that back, let's say I was clicked over here. To put that back, just click on it. Or you can click on multiple columns too, like address and city together. But I'll click just on country, let it go, click and drag, and put it right back where it was. That's how you can rearrange columns. Now, if you go to close the table right now, you'll get a prompt that says, do you want to save the layout changes, the, the changes to the layout of the table customer team? I'm going to say yes. Access will remember the widths of your columns, the position of the columns, and so on. 
That's the only time you have to worry about saving things, when you make design changes or layout changes to your table. The data is saved for you when you close the table or move from record to record. Now that we've got some data in our table, in the next lesson, we're going to talk about sorting and filtering the data.